The following is a presentation of CrossFit HQ. Hey guys, sorry I'm late. I've been hanging out in New Orleans with my boy Sean Payton. Hudak CrossFit fans, welcome to the Big Easy. Live from New Orleans, 14.3 starts now. New Orleans is no stranger to celebration. Tonight, it hosts a fitness party. The CrossFit Open moved to the Crescent City, the home of the best jazz, best Cajun food, and best party plays host to a pair of the best CrossFit athletes. Games veteran Stacy Tovar and newcomer Sandra Pacelli will be the first to sample Dave Castro's latest dish of fitness jambalaya. It won't be easy in the Big Easy. 14.3 is next. The athletes are on the field. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome, a little late to the party, the director of the CrossFit Games, Dave Castro. many reps as possible in eight minutes of 10 deadlifts, 15 box jump. 15 deadlift, 15 box jump. 20 deadlift, 15 box jump. 25 deadlift, 15 box jump. 30 deadlift, 15 box jump. 35 deadlift, 15 box jump. The box height, 24 inches for the men, 20 inches for the women. The load for the deadlift, 135 for the men, 95 for the women. That is for the set of 10. That is for the set of 10. For the set of 15, the weight increases. 185 for the men, 135 for the women. For the set of 20, 225 for the men, 155 for the women. For the set of 25, 275 for the men, 155, sorry, 185 for the women. For the set of 30, 315 for the men, 205 for the women. And for the set of 35, 365 for the men, 225 for the women. Any questions? Thank you. Yes. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed your chest of our pull up suckers because we're getting heavy this week. Hey guys, I'm your host, Rory McKernan. I am thrilled to be here with the good people of New Orleans. We're live at CrossFit NOLA. It's going to be a fantastic show. We'll get to the movement standards momentarily, but first, I want to slow down just a little bit. Slow this train down. Let's talk about where we've been. Let's take a deep breath. Two workouts are in the books. Including tonight, we've got three more to go. If you're like me, your ego's a little bit bruised maybe, your hands definitely hurt, but you got to remember this is a five-week process. So keep your head in the game, plenty of time to climb up the leaderboard, lots of movements that we haven't seen yet. Two amazing CrossFit communities have welcomed us, Atlanta and Miami. Now we've moved a little bit further west, and New Orleans is living up to every single reputation that it has. So back to the business, 14.3. Finally, the weights are getting bigger. We've seen these two movements before, but never with this rep scheme, never with the ascending weights. Dave, seriously, the weights and the reps go up? It's ridiculous. Let's have a look at the movement standards. 14.3 should look like this. Workout 14.3 is deadlifts and box jumps. 
Every repetition of the deadlift starts with the weight on the floor and finishes when the athlete extends their hips and knees and their shoulders are behind the bar at the top of the movement. The athlete may choose any grip that they like, but their feet must be inside the hand. Every box jump finishes when the athlete is on the box with the hips and knees clearly extended. Athletes may step up to the top of the box as long as they reach full knee and hip extension before returning for the next rep. The athlete must reach full hip and knee extension on top of the box before returning. Reaching extension in midair is a no rep. Please note that judging criteria. Make sure that the judge marks your time after every single round of box jumps. That could be hugely costly on the leaderboard if you forget that. For you guys at home, remember, you can tweet us at any point during the show. Use the hashtag CrossFit Games, and we'll put your questions on the cool down show where Dave Castro sits with these athletes. And we have a special guest this evening, another CrossFit competitor. You guys know him better as the coach of a local team here, the New Orleans Saints. You guys excited about Coach Payton? Coach Payton's joining us on the cool down show, so send your tweets now. Back to this workout. I know that the Open's all about exposing weakness, and I know that, expo that attacking your weaknesses is a great way to get more fit. But if I'm being honest with you guys, the first two weeks, I didn't really like the flavor they were bringing. But now we got some heavy barbells. I'm not telling you this is my jam necessarily, but I'm excited about jumping a few spaces up on my customized leaderboard. So while I'm worried about competing with my friends, the ladies on site are worried about competing with the fittest on earth. Let's take a closer look at our athletes first. A five-time competitor at the CrossFit Games and a mainstay in the North Central region. Take a look at Stacey Tovar. Stacey Tovar comes into the 2014 season looking to earn her sixth trip to the CrossFit Games. I love CrossFit. I'm super passionate about it. I love just being around the people that enjoy it just as much as me. And being around the community and making other people better is so where my heart belongs. Recently, the 29-year-old from CrossFit Omaha quit her job to focus on what she truly loves. Sometimes I'm just not sure if it like actually sunk in yet. Like I still, calling myself a professional athlete is just like really weird. <laughs> I don't feel it uh, any different. I guess maybe that's the feeling you're supposed to have when you really truly love what you do every day. Her performance credentials and personality have combined to help Stacy redefine beauty as strength. I want to be the best and I'm out to get it. I'm really dedicated, um, really dedicated. This hairstyle is this, it's called the side swoop. Half the ears have to show, gotta have some danglies in front. Always the flippies up here and low pony. There's nothing to it other than hair product. It can be as messy as you want it, as long as it goes sideways, you've got the side scoop. That young lady is standing by with Kiki Dixon. Crossfitters, please show your love for Stacy Tovar. How exciting to be here in the Big Easy. Stacy, you have quite an impressive history with the CrossFit Games. How does this atmosphere stack up? The Big Easy is pretty big and awesome! Thank you, guys! Thank you! There we go, getting that crowd riled up. I know we've been moving fast. You haven't had much time to think about it, but what's your strategy for 14.3? No miss reps and uh, make sure that everyone counts and just go at a steady, steady pace. Eight minutes is um, not a sprint, but it's also not a marathon. So I'm just kind of going to go Stacey Tovar style. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, Stacey. Facing Stacey this evening is a former team competitor of Diablo CrossFit. In her first appearance as an individual athlete at the 2013 Games, she missed the podium by just one spot. Let's take a closer look at Alessandra Pacelli. Sandra Pacelli made an unforgettable debut as an individual competitor in 2013. After finishing eighth in the World Wide Open, she tore through the NorCal Regional en route to a fourth place finish at the Games. As a result, Life is now a lot different for the 27-year-old from Diablo CrossFit. 
I've had the opportunity to travel so many different places. I mean, Montana, New Zealand. So, you know, it's just, I feel so fortunate now. Otherwise, I never would have been able to afford all those things or uh, had those experiences. So, definitely changed in a good way. As a rookie at the games, Pacelli faced down a ton of adversity. Not only did she have to compete against the fittest women in the world, but she also had to deal with the unknown and unknowable that comes along with the first trip to Carson. It showed me that I'm, you know, a pretty uh, even all-around athlete. Like I'm not really a big specialist, so uh, I tend to do well in competitions that address uh, many different fields. So uh, I guess in that sense, it definitely helped me. Rookie jitters would not slow Pacelli down as she steamrolled through the games and almost made it to the podium in 2013. This year, with her confidence soaring, she's looking to make a statement in 2014. I definitely made some rookie mistakes and learned from that, and now you know, I, I want to go for even more. They love you! Holy smokes! Alessandra, I know you've been traveling around with the CrossFit Tour, competing in venues similar to this. How do you think that'll benefit you this evening? I think it's, uh, that it's helped me really adapt to new environments and being in front of a lot of people. And so just, uh, yeah, being in that type of environment uh, will really benefit me. <laughs> awesome. Now, in week one, we saw the athletes really pace off one another. In week two, they might as well have been in separate rooms. What's your strategy for 14.3? You know, I'm just going to try to keep going. It's a a little shorter workout, so, you know, just gonna try to do my thing. All right, girl. It sounds like these athletes are ready to go, Ro. They're gonna have their chance in just a minute. The ladies have a few more moments to think through this workout and to strategize. We're gonna take a quick little break. Check out this package. You are my son. My biggest fan. I want you to have the opportunities I didn't. To be smarter. To be faster. Come on, bring it up. To be stronger. I love CrossFit, and I love this game, so it's time to kick it off. For the competition call, let's go to the man who currently occupies ninth in this region, Chase Ingram, and another amazing competitor who's both first in the 45 to 50 age group and 21st on the, on the SoCal leaderboard, Bill Grundler. Well, thanks, Rory. Oh, well, there you go, world. Here's 14.3. Oh, what's that? Your hands hurt? Oh, well, you just pulled deadlifting duty because Dave Castro just dropped another bomb for 14.3. If I had one prediction out of this whole thing, I'd have to pull out my best Mr. T impersonation. Prediction? Pain. Lots of pain. And let's take a look at the ladies who are going to experience all of that pain. Two very similar athletes, Sandra Pacelli and Stacy Tovar. But they have a very different competitive background. Yeah, you know, they're almost identical on paper. Um, they're both ex-college athletes. But the difference here is Stacy has a lot more competitive CrossFit uh, experience. And this is all about nerves in this arena right here. So whoever can handle those nerves is going to be the best. Seconds. Well, we can make all the predictions in the world of how it's going to go down. But we get to see it live right here in New Orleans. The battle on the bayou is set. 14.3 is open and ready for fitness. Ten seconds. <laughs> Five, four, three, 
two, one, go. 14.3 is here, and we're looking at the big weights for the first time, the heaviest weights we've ever seen in the Open. You know, I'm really glad that David's really finally starting to do this stuff where he starts out a weight that everyone can do, and gradually, you know what, the better you are, the stronger you are, the harder it's going to be, but we actually get to some big heavy weights now for these athletes. Well, let's talk about what we're actually getting into. It's going to start off with 10 deadlifts. For the ladies, it's 95 pounds into five box jumps. You also have the option to step up, but two feet have to be on the ground and on the box. Once we're done with the 15, we're up and up the reps, we're up and up the weight. It's gonna go to 135. After 15 reps at 135, we're gonna move up. Now, we're gonna look at here, Bill, transitions. Transitions have got to be key, especially in these early rounds. Yeah, absolutely. Right here, you know, they're going to become, everyone's going to come flying out of the gate. It's not real heavy in the beginning. Box jumps for most people, and the fact that you can step is going to be easy, but you have to stop every single time, and you're having to bend over. And as we get into those later rounds, compressing that diaphragm is going to be a big deal. So these early rounds are going to be real important because, one, pacing is always a big deal here. How fast are they going to go? Are they? When are they going to decide to unbreak, to make these unbroken or not unbroken? And are they going to make every single rep count? And are they going to have smooth transitions? Because it will really matter in the early rounds. In the later rounds, that may just end up being rest time for them. Our ladies just finished 15 reps at 135 pounds. They now move back to the box where they're going to stick with the same 15. So the reps and the deadlift go up, but they do not go up on the box jumps. We're now moving to the round of 20 deadlifts. We're moving from 135 pounds to 155 pounds. We're approaching the two-minute mark. We're already a quarter of the way through this workout. Right there, it looks like Asana Pacelli is a little faster on a transition, and that's actually you know, good for her now. Because like we said, it's important in the early rounds. It's in the later rounds when that's actually when, the, when you want to be kind of catching your breath. Now this weight right here, they're used to this. This is their Diane weight. 155 pounds of the doing 2159, this in handstand push-ups. So they know what this feels like for about 20 reps. They, this shouldn't be un unfamiliar territory for them. Now, I have to admit, when this workout was released, I've got to come clean. I sent <laughs> shivers down my spine, deadlifts and box jumps, something that has plagued me my entire cross career. I had to go to therapy after the regionals last year. I think people either love a workout like this or hate a workout like this. Uh, myself, the older competitors, I tell you what, our Achilles, the second they said box jump, Achilles just kind of just kind of shuddered a little bit. But this really is a posterior back end workout. Going from a box jump, especially when you're getting the heavy rates, a lot of reps, and then going straight, or I'm sorry, deadlifts, and then going right into box jump, that is a big shot to the back. So hopefully everyone's ready for that. Now Stacy Tovar had a one rep lead coming off the box. She's now having some trouble with those transitions, and Alessandra Pacelli has now moved in front. So we talked earlier, not just the time it takes, but do you put the right weight on the bar? That's absolutely right. So that's going to be important. You can see right now we already have a mess up, and that is huge. Alessandra Pacelli is the athlete on your right, and she has the wrong weights on the bar. She got five reps into it. Those are not going to count. So now Stacy Tovar on your left in the white shorts has now moved back ahead of uh, Alessandra Pacelli. This is hugely important, and this right here could be the turning point for this particular event. One, you don't want to waste energy on wasted reps, but you have to have everything pre-set up. Now, granted, these women really didn't get a whole lot chance to strategize before they did this, but if you mess up on those transitions, it is going to hurt you, which it's doing there right now. We're on the 185 deadlift, and we're seeing these ladies break it up for the very first time. They came out of the gates very fast. We're just past the halfway point of this workout. It's fast, and they've been moving very quickly, but they've been breaking this up a lot more than I thought I would see at this stage. You know what? I think the, the, uh, this is, again, one of those workouts where it's the first half of the workout is not the workout. It's how you set yourself up for that second half of the workout, and this is exactly what they're running into right now. If they went out too hard, too fast in the beginning, you are slammed with lactic acid and your muscles just start to seize up and then 185 feels like 225 too early stacy tovar now moving to the box 15 box jumps alessandra pacelli just a few reps behind her so she has made up some ground now we're talking deadlift box jumps something we've seen before at the regional level where we're talking we're looking at 21 15 9 rep scheme yet the weights are that heavier echelon that we'll see later in this workout we know these ladies were pretty close, but it was... It's actually Stacy that was ahead of that by about 
30 seconds. So Stacy was about 311 when we did that in 2013. Alessandra was about 341 when we did that. Here's the difference with that workout. They were all under four minutes. So by the time they were scrambling to get to the last couple reps, they were done. Here they have to increase. They have to keep on going one, and they got to bring the weight up. And that is extremely demanding on these athletes. It's not getting easier, and it's not just getting heavier. It's harder and heavier and more reps. Stacy Tomar showing she is pulling slightly ahead. You see, it's about five reps, and those are the five reps that Alessandra lost with that improper weight change. We have about two and a half minutes left. Stacy Tomar on your left, Alessandra Pacelli on the right. They're on the 205 pound deadlift bar and we've moved the reps up to 30. Now if you've watched Stacey Tovar's back she's starting to round up a little bit. She's really starting to fatigue and that's gonna that's important. That's exactly what everyone is thinking. When they think deadlifts they think back issues. So granted they all want to keep good form. They want to be able to move through this but you're gonna start to see form start to break down as they fatigue. Two minutes left to go. We have eight minutes total for this workout and Alessandra Pacelli on the right side of your screen is slow Wow, she's making up great ground now, but they're down to single. But now it's a rest time in between those singles. How much time do they need? And if you can get a double like Sonna did right there, that's going to jump you off, which it did. Both ladies going rep for rep, single for single. Alessandra Pacelli takes a break to reassess her weights. So does Stacey Tovar. There's 90 seconds left. I don't think there's time to mess with the weights right now. It's just one at a time. Grit, grind, and get your way through this, and you gotta get back to the box. Those are 15 fast reps. This right here is the round in the time frame that nobody, this is the pain zone right here. CrossFit workouts always have that pain zone, but this is where it is, and it's about how much pain are you willing to take, and you know it hurts, but you cannot stop. You have a minute left, and it is go time no matter how bad it hurts. Stacy Tovar at 20 reps. Alessandra Pacelli at 20 reps. It's not a She jumps up, but then Stacey catches her on those singles. Alessandra Pacelli, a one rep lead, and now she's eyeballing Stacey Tovar. If she can stay one rep ahead, judge's hand is in the air. Four reps left and 30 seconds to go. Alessandra Pacelli, two reps over Stacey Tovar. 20 seconds left. One, two more reps left to go before she can get back on that box. She wants to begin on that box too because that's where some quick reps are going to happen. Alessandra Pacelli has pulled ahead. Ten seconds left. Now she's trying to get as many boxes as she can. Stacey Tovar, one more rep two, on the deadlift. One. But it is Alessandra wow. Pacelli coming wow. back from behind to take 14.3. Uh, my prediction was correct. Pain. There it was. That was impressive. Pain lots of pain and looking at these athletes beforehand it's not a surprise to be able to see Alessandra kind of pull through she was a rower in college and if anybody spent enough time on that thing you know it's a life suck it's a pain cave it's those who can handle that pain zone and the ones that can sit in there the longest are going to excel in workouts like this and that's exactly what happened Alessandra Pacelli with an unofficial score in the center of your screen, 164 reps. Stacey Tovar, 159 reps. Now taken back to look, Alessandra Pacelli got off the box first, changing out the weights. We saw transitions were very important. This was the first one, nice and smooth before moving on to that 155. And I think that both of, the, both of these ladies were great. They were standing over the bar, pulling the weight on. Super smart move. Um, you can see how fast they were moving in the beginning, and that's what everyone's going to do. But the second you blow a transition like this, that right there is what crushes you. You have to have your weight set up correctly. And you can see, actually, Stacey was really nice. 
Lucy help uh, you know Alessandra out on that because she could have done 10 reps instead of just five extra. So Alessandra lost a lot of reps here, but Stacy Tovar started to struggle. She came out very, very quick, and Alessandra slowly chipped back away to get herself back in front. Now you can see that, that uh, uh, Stacy's back was starting to break. That form was starting to break, but uh, Sondra just looked so strong in that deadlift. Even though she was doing singles, sometimes doubles, she was just ripping that bar off the ground with no problem. Her turnover is very quick, and she ended up making up the reps she lost and getting by, and she was the first one to the box at the very end of the workout. We knew how important those little reps are. We've seen it in the first two workouts. It makes a huge difference. And if you can get to the easy portion of the workout, which is the box jump, that's where you're going to make a big reps. You want to end on that section at whatever round you're in. All right, well, that will do it for us here in the booth. We have two athletes down, 200,000 more to go. We're going to send it back down to the competition floor where Roy McKernan is with our winner, Alessandra Pacelli. Alessandra, that was amazing. It didn't look too fun, though. When did it really start to set in? When did it really start to hurt? It really started to hurt when the deadlifts got a little bit higher, so I'm sure for Stacy as well, I felt my back start to cramp, and it's just like from that point, you just got to hang on. To the best that you can. <laughs> so the, the, you started ahead, lost ground when you put the long weights on. What was going on through your head at that point? You know, I was I was a little bit uh, frustrated, and I know a lot of times it's easy to feel like you know you're too far behind. But I guess this is good practice for me because in most cases, you know, nothing's always going to go as planned. So it's just good practice being prepared for anything and chasing from behind. Nice. And then I saw you. Yeah. I saw you looking up at the clock. You look like you definitely had the win on Stacy, but you're looking at the clock as you approach the box jumps. What were you thinking? I was thinking just trying to get as many reps as possible because, you know, I don't want to have to do this workout again. And, you know, <laughs> so, yeah, just a sprint to the end. Fantastic job. Congratulations. <laughs> Kiki Dixon is standing by with the young lady who is chasing her rep for rep, Stacy Tovar. Stacy, an incredible battle between the two of you. That last 90 seconds, it seemed like she got you. What happened? Yeah, my back just blew up. Was, I did a heavy deadlift burpee workout on Monday and went to get a massage uh, today. And I told him, dude, it's blown up still. You got to do something. So I thought I was ready, but it caught up at the end real quick. Like. And any uh, advice to the rest of us that have to get after this? Yeah, break up sooner than you think. Um, I uh, probably held on a little bit too long from the beginning and uh, break them up sooner than later. All right, good advice. Ladies and gentlemen, Stacy Tova. Mr. Castro, that, that was unique. Ascending reps and ascending weight. What were you thinking when you put this one together? It's time to uh, test some strength and give people an opportunity to express their strength but in a, uh, in a unique way, in a crossway, to express your strength, you need to earn the right to do that. And to do that, you need some gas, and you need to be a good crossfitter. So before you can even touch the heavyweights, you need to do a lot of work to get there. And uh, this will let those people who are strong crossfitters get to show their stuff a little. But just, you just can't be strong and do well at this work. You have to be a strong crossfitter. Yeah. And as you can see, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on with this workout. And, uh, you got to stay on top of the transitions as an athlete and as a judge. They both have to. They were at a disadvantage coming into it with not knowing the uh, event right away. But still, for all you guys out there doing it, make sure you rehearse the switch outs and know exactly what you're putting on to avoid that unfortunate situation we had here in this workout. Yeah. Right booty. Luckily, uh, Pichelli made the ground up. So usually you're here. You were a little bit late today. And we get to give stuff away. So I was thinking, since you weren't here, I'm going to give something away. I got a pair of these, uh, the power shoes, and I'd like to give a pair away. I got a size 12 here. So if anybody got a size 12, we'll get a couple guys up there. I thought that would be cool to give it away. Roy, just stop. Just stop, Roy. You give away this pair of 12 shoes, and I'm going to go ahead and give away a free card for, to make your own custom nanos to everyone in the building.
Why, why you got to be like that, Dave? <laughs> That's amazing. Thanks again to our friends at Reebok. They just set the bar really, really high. It's been an amazing night. That's our show. But if you're at home, stick around. We've got the cool down coming up. Remember, Coach Payton's going to be sitting down, so send your tweets in now. Next week, we're going to do this. We're going to join our family in the Northwest region to do it all over again. Right now, hit 14.3 hard. Have fun. Submit your score on St. Patty's Day. A little work hard, play hard. I'll see you next week, and until then, I'll see you on the leaderboard. Josh Bridges, the man who finished one spot behind champion Rich Froning in 2011, faces off against Scott Panchik, who has finished just off the podium for two straight years. It's a battle between SoCal's favorite son and the surprise of the Central East, as the Open heads into the final stages in Seattle, Washington. 14.4, live next Thursday on games.crossfit.com. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is the Cool Down Show. It's your show, really. All the questions submitted via Twitter. We've got the athletes standing here. We've got Dave Castro and, of course, somebody who seems to be pretty popular in this room, Coach Sean Payton from the New Orleans Saints. It's a pretty good turnout right now. Not bad, huh? This is pretty special. It's a rowdy crowd. We got, we got the best fans in the world. 
Thanks, Coach. We're glad to have you here. Now, Dave, before we take a tweet, I know that you had a coach, uh, a question for Coach to start things off. So, Coach, are you doing the open workouts? I am. Uh, I think I'm going to stop after two watching three. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, later in the week with the schedule that we have, uh, we try to, try to squeeze it in. Uh, last week at Tiger's Den and uh, our home box here, Big Easy, uh, they're just a bunch of great gyms and... Uh, this one looks like a doozy, though. I'm already sore just watching these two. <laughs> Anybody like to do the workout with Coach Payton? He, he threatened to jump in with me and Boz. Let's take a tweet from you guys. And the first one is going to come from Caitlin Ween. Now that you've done 14.3, what would you change strategy-wise if and when you're to do it again? And uh, I'll start with you, Sandra. Uh, I would make sure you know which weights to put on properly. <laughs> <laughs> And also, you know, you um, might be smart to break up the uh, deadlifts a little bit earlier, but just, uh, you know, if you have to, fast singles, just fast transitions and getting back on it. Great. Uh, any thoughts on that? Are yeah. you going to do it again first? If the back's feeling okay, I might get another go. Um, but I have a feeling if I'm still sore from Monday, I'm going to be sore <laughs> come the weekend too. So like Alessandra said, I'd probably break it up early, but um, I'd also... I missed a couple reps, not opening my hips on the box, and the box really wasn't a factor at all. Uh, it, was my, it was the back and the deadlift. Yeah, it looked like you were just kind of breathing and almost relaxing yeah, on those. Totally. So we have another tweet that actually wants to get into more detail about that weight change situation. So from Colby210, Pacelli would have had 180 if she hadn't messed up her weight. You think you would have done better? Uh, probably if I, you know, maybe I lost out on a couple of reps. I'm not sure how many I did, but... You know, it's all That's in the past, and I think it was good uh, practice for, uh, you know, if anything does go wrong in the future, you just got to keep going and you can't slow down. It wasn't just her fault. It was, it was on us, too. Yeah. So for that tweet who said Pasali messed up, we messed up, too. Right. right. So uh, actually, for the athletes again, did you think through the transitions before the workout? Was there too much going on? Did you lay them out? Did you know where things were? No. <laughs> I was relying on Boz for that. He did a quick run through, and... Just from memory, I was like, okay, it goes, take the blue off, put the green on, put the blue, green. and then I was like, oh, shit, I don't know. I'm just going to wait. <laughs> I'm just going to listen to Buzz. You got, you got something to add? Hey, it, it, it happens with us, 12 guys on the field, delay of game, and I just felt like, ah, oh. <laughs> it happens everywhere. <laughs> So, so yes, pay it at home, Dave already said it, but seriously pay attention to that detail and probably plan that out in advance would be prudent to do as well. Let's take another tweet from you guys, Jumbo Elf. What is it that always, uh, what is it that allows you to push past that mental wall? When your mind tells you to take a break, how do you turn that off? And I'm gonna go to the rower first because I've heard horrible stories about rowers. So basically, you know, you to turn your mind off, you really just got to think like you don't want to regret what you did. You know, always when you do workouts and after you're done, you're like, oh, I wish I would have done that. Wish I would have done more. But just knowing uh, from training how much your body's actually capable of and the reward that you get after from pushing yourself. I think that's what really drives me. Stacy. Yeah, I just constantly remind myself that um, you have the ability to do it and no one's going to stop you. Keep going. Go for that extra rep. Yeah. Uh, Coach, we talked last night, and I know that you're a big character guy, and you can kind of identify that in, in even recruits or people that are potentially going to be on the team before you meet them. So maybe you can speak to this as well. You know, I, I think you, you always fall back on the time you put in and, uh, and knowing that you put that work in, obviously, like these two have. Um, you know, I, I think just the environment, you know, some of those things really increases the adrenaline and, you, you know, things – Things happen that uh, you, you, you kind of maximize your ability. I'm, I'm just amazed. I'm waiting for them to hydrate. Like, at what point, like, I'm, I've had three water breaks, you know, watching during that. And I'm like, they're still not getting something to drink. <laughs> they're not human. Is, there, is, there, it, it, is that pretty normal for in a duration of workout? An eight-minute duration, eight minute duration yes. for CrossFitters thinking, and something hey, this not touching the short, water. they don't need water breaks. Wow. Can I, can, I sell you out? can I sell you out on your 2K row? What's You're that? like, man, I would have done fantastic, but I took two water breaks. That's, it killed me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I felt like after I was done, I'm thinking, why did I, I mean, literally stopped and, and took a swig of water, which I don't know how many reps that was, but that was, that was, it wasn't real smart. So you could take a page from these ladies. Let's go to another tweet. Uh, DJ DDL, you two both played sports in college. Do you think you have to be a former athlete or pro athlete to succeed at the CrossFit Games? 
I don't think you have to be a former uh, college athlete. I think as long as you have the passion and, and the drive and the will to put in the work that anything's possible. I'm sure there's a lot of games athletes out there who don't have any former experience. So, you know, the sky's the limit. Nice. Agree. Totally agree. Do you, uh, I'm actually curious if there's a certain position when you guys do CrossFit workouts with the Saints, is there a certain position or mindset or background that plays well for uh, CrossFit? When we, when we implement certain elements CrossFit in, in our conditioning and or our testing, you typically see the, the safeties, the corners, um, some of the, the running backs. Um, it benefits those players that are somewhere in that 200 to 225, 235 pound range. But it's interesting to see how you know, bigger athletes will do on a certain element like the row. Um, it really depends on what we're asking them to do. You know what, what we're asking them to do and so you know that first test we did last fall you know they just came in and looked at it we kind of went through it with them and you know they were just uh they were like the anti-crossfit people at that time our team was because they knew what they had to do it was gonna can, you, hurt. can you tell us what that test was we did a series of power cleans air squats burpees and then shuttle runs and so we divided our team into four groups based on their positions and size uh, the weight varied based on their weight. And so the bigger players obviously were pulling more weight. Uh, 10 power cleans, it was 10 burpees, it was 10 air squats, a 40 shuttle. It was back on the bar again, 10 power cleans, 10 air squats, 10 burpees, a, a 30 shuttle. And then it just went sequentially down. And then we really graded a curve per position group with a champion in each group. And then anybody that fell off like a, a clearly below a landmark, you know, we continue to work on the conditioning. Nice. Can I actually hear you speak to this one? I know a lot of people say, oh, uh, if a pro athlete came in, they would crush the CrossFit games, or when so-and-so gets his hands on this, we're all finished. No, that's not happening. You, to, no one's coming in and crushing the CrossFit games or CrossFit competitions without a solid base of CrossFit, without having done CrossFit for years. You take a look at the leaderboard right now, and the guys on the top five, guys on the top five are all multi-year CrossFit games competitors. And they, even before they got to that level, had all been crossfitting for years. People think Rich came out of nowhere and just started dominating. He had two or three years under his belt before he rose to the uh, ranks he's at now of crossfit base foundational work. And uh, no one, no one, no one is coming out of the NFL or any of these sports without having done crossfit and dominating our sport. It's way too far beyond that now. Yeah. You have to be... You have to have years of crossfitting underneath. Now, that's not to say someone from that world couldn't stop that and just dedicate themselves to crossfit and in three or four years get to the level, but um, it's not happening. It's not happening just out of the blue. Cool. I'd like right. to say something about the workout, something that we didn't talk about. There is a tiebreaker for this workout. So if you have the same amount of reps, if you both got to, let's say you guys both got to 180, the tiebreaker is the time that you finish the box jumps in the last round. So the time you finish that, let's say, uh, the box jumps on the fourth round, the judge writes down that time, and that is used as your tiebreaker for this, for this workout. And that's important for you guys at home getting ready to do this. Make sure you look at the rules and get yourself familiar with the tiebreakers and all the rules for this event. Great, thanks. I think we have time for one more tweet. We'll pull that up. I'll look. I like to see uh, Coach was shaking his head about the NFL players not being able to just step in and, and, uh, and knock it out of the park. This one's for you, Dave. Cody Harrod says, Dave, do you think anyone will, complete, will completely finish in the eight minutes? No, I do not. The, the, that last 35 reps at, um, at 365 for the men and 225 for the women, that's going to be stout to get there and have done all that other work un, you know, close to unbroken. That, that'll be difficult. But, you know, every time I say no to these things, every time I question what the athletes can do, I'm always proven wrong. So I wouldn't, I'm going to say no, but I also wouldn't be surprised if they, uh, I'll put money on it. I'll put $500 on it. I'll put $500. <laughs> All right, now I actually want to hear answers from the panel. Do you guys think that, uh, let's start with a lady or a man, could, could finish this workout? You know, I'm not sure. I mean, uh, at the 205, even at the 205 for the ladies, it did uh, get pretty spicy. And uh, I can only imagine after that uh, how much uh, or how bad it'd feel on your back. But uh, anything's possible, so I'm not putting uh, any doubt on that. <laughs> I think somebody with a pretty strong deadlift, maybe that'd be their favorite lift or something, they may be able to, but it'd be pretty difficult. Can you shake Dave for a $500 bet? Yeah, right I'll now? shake Dave. Yeah. <laughs>
Coach, what do you think? Somebody can finish? I think it's going to be hard. And if someone does, I'd like to sign them. <laughs> there you go. That's better than $500. <laughs> Great. Quickly. Guys at home, that's the last tweet. Thank you all for your tweets. Thank you guys all for being here. Thank you for the show. Coach Payton, thank you for being here. Fantastic to meet you. One more big round of applause for everyone. Thanks to you at home for joining us. We'll see you next week from Seattle. Good night.